Perspective on all of this happening today, we bring in one of our political insiders who forecasted this very scenario just a few weeks ago with us. And we're joined now by Reed Ribble, the former three-term Republican congressman from the 8th District. And we spoke not too long ago about this potential possibility after the debate happened. Uh, what was your reaction when you heard this news come down yesterday? Um, I, I wasn't at all surprised. I mean, there was, um, there was an ever-increasing wave that was starting to take down the, the Biden campaign, and it was something that he was not going to be able to get over. And all this negative press ultimately, I believe, helped him make the decision. I think it was a right decision uh, to step down. We spoke, uh, it was just before the 4th of July. You mentioned that this would be a patriotic thing for him to do. It would be good for his legacy. Are you surprised, though, that it took as long as it did? Because this wave, it was pretty high when we spoke, and it, it just kept getting higher and higher. Yeah, I was, I was a little surprised it took as long as it did. But on the same hand, as you get older, your mind still tells you that you're young. You think you're more capable than maybe you are. And I, I just believe it took him some time to, to let his ego kind of get to the side and then make a decision that he believed was right for the country. All right. In your opinion, then, how does this change the race? Because one of the main talking points is now off the table that he's too old, at least from a GOP standpoint. Democrats could now turn around and say, Donald Trump is the oldest presidential nominee in history. But how does this change the race? I, I don't know that it, well, no, I shouldn't say that. It does change it significantly because there's going to be a dramatic difference in age between the two candidates. However, if they select um, Vice President Harris, she will be ha having to carry the water of everything that um, went wrong during the Biden years. For example, mm -hmm. the high inflation and the issues at the border with the uh, the number of undocumented aliens coming into the country. And those are going to be laid right at her feet. And so I think on the policy side of things, things are the status quo if they select her. And right now you need to realize that all of his delegates, around he had around, I don't know, 3,800 delegates or so, they're now free agents. You mentioned uh, that she will be tied with President Biden, the GOP already racing to do that, to define her as, as just another Joe Biden, if you will. Yesterday, however, read online Democratic fundraising went through the roof. They raised over $50 million online. They went at $11.5 million in just one hour. That's according to the New York Times. What does that tell you about perhaps re-energizing that side of the ticket, what, whoever it turns yeah. out to be? Oh, it's, it's really significant. I mean, that, that's like a tsunami of its yeah. own. Uh, that is a lot of money to raise in a single day. And, and you, you are seeing a shift in energy. And I mean, the, the Republicans had a really good convention in Milwaukee. There was a lot of energy and they were clearly energized after mm -hmm. the assassination attempt on President Trump. And, and the, the Democratic Party had to do something to change the narrative. And now a lot of the energy is shifting. Uh, we don't know who the ticket's going to be because their convention isn't for a few more weeks. Um, but you can bet that everybody's going to be jockeying and trying to position for a vice presidential slot or coming out in favor or opposed to Vice President Harris in the interim. But all of the media is going to be on their side. All right, let's get back to the vice president potential picks in, in just a second, because there's a person out there that you had mentioned to me three weeks ago that might be even a presidential nominee who's now positioning himself. We'll get to that in a second. But I want to point this out because you say, uh, with Vice President Harris, we don't know if she's going to be the case. You had mentioned to me last time, maybe she wouldn't be good because she's not viewed all that favorably either. And in the last Marquette University Law School poll in national voters in May, the last time they asked this question, her net negative was 24. That was higher than the net negative for Joe Biden. It is higher than the net negative at that time for Donald Trump. So should she be a slam dunk for the top of the ticket? Um, I don't think so, but since I'm not a, a Democratic <laughs> voter, I'm probably not the best person to ask. But I don't think that she's their best choice, certainly, because if you want to separate from Biden and from the Biden administration, you want to get away from the inflation discussion oh, and the issues at the border, uh, you would you would think they would want to start fresh with somebody new. Reed, in your um career, when you were faced with any kind of numbers, I don't know if they did that kind of extensive polling on you, but you, you did enough polling to understand where you were. How much do politicians actually pay attention to the fact that they're net negative? Oh, you pay a lot of attention to it. Um, 
I I never had a net negative, and so for which me, is why we have you on this show. <laughs> it, was, it was relatively easy um, because I was my positives were always above fifty percent and quite a bit above fifty percent at the end. But but you have to pay attention to it because it tells you about voter attitudes. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, uh, voters want to to vote for somebody who they believe is authentic likable and honest to, to the degree that they understand honesty. Vice presidential pick, how important it is it here? The person I was referencing before is Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, who has endorsed uh, Kamala Harris, as has many uh, Democratic governors in Midwest states, battleground states, including Tony Evers, Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan. How important is that selection if, in fact, it is VP Harris at the top? You know, it, I would almost always say that the VP candidate doesn't matter at all. But I think in this case it does because everything is so brand new. Uh, this is kind of a historical mm -hmm. event, an unprecedented event. And so in this case, the vice presidential candidate probably will count a bit more than it does on the Republican side. And so picking somebody like Governor Shapiro from Pennsylvania, which is a battleground state, I think would be very, very wise. You could also pick Senator Mark Kelly from Arizona, mm -hmm. for example. And, and so I think that that would make sense. I think it would be a mistake to go with Gretchen Whitmer from uh, Michigan. It's probably too big of a stretch for some voters to have two women on the ticket. We shall see how that plays out. Reed, we always thank you for the time and we really appreciate the insight. Good to be with you, Chris. Thanks.